Let's take a look at force vibrations. Force vibrations are uh, something we frequently see in mechanical systems. It, it's in a case where we've got a, a vibration, um, but it's got a mechanical force behind it uh, that's periodic. The nature of that force is periodic. So you might see this in a something like a car, an engine in a car. It's got a periodic motion, uh, and maybe the car vibrates. Or a washing machine. You've got a motor in there that has some kind of periodic motion that's forcing the washer to vibrate some. So the equation for force vibrations looks like this. We've got um, the, the usual thing on the left. It's the mass times the acceleration. That's the second derivative of the position with respect to time. Plus some kind of spring constant k times the position x. But in this case, on the right hand side, we have what's called the forcing term. And so uh, the way I, I've written it is just a general periodic function where, so it's a periodic function, it's a sine times omega f, this is the frequency, we'll call this the force frequency, omega sub f, times the time. And we have some amplitude to this force. So I've got that labeled as P sub M, following the notation in the book. Now, we've got, we've got what's called here a, a non-homogeneous differential equation. And the general solution to such a differential equation is obtained by adding a particular solution to the general solution of the corresponding homogeneous equation. Now the homogeneous equation is the one we've been working with. It looks like this, mx, this double dot, plus kx equals zero. This is the homogeneous differential equation. So we know what the solution to the homogeneous version is. <coughs> and so what we need to do is, is really guess the solution. This is how we always do these differential equations. We guess a solution to this um, non-homogeneous differential equation. And so we want to guess a particular solution. And, and you know, just looking at it, the <coughs> uh, form of the guess is kind of obvious. The, let's see, so I'm going to call this, we're going to guess a solution to that, to this equation. Um, we're going to guess that the particular solution, so x sub particular, looks something like this, where it has some kind of magnitude times the sine of omega sub f okay so that's our guess for the solution of this differential equation so what the way we proceed with this is we since we have our guess we substitute it in so I, I'm gonna rewrite this with first I'll take the second derivative of this particular solution um, multiply it times the mass add in k plus this this particular solution, set that equal to this, p sub m sine omega f t, and then we can go and look at what, what this needs to be, this x sub m. So let's do that. Okay, and so here it is, I've, I've substituted in uh, this particular solution into this equation up here. So you can see, what, it, what do I get? Well, the second derivative of this is going to be minus omega sub f squared times x sub m sine omega f t. So that's how it looks. We've got minus, here we go, minus the mass omega sub f squared x sub m sine omega f t plus, plus k times x, which was this, <coughs> and that equals p sine omega sub f t. So there we've, we've substituted it in and written that equation out. So I can now go and look at this and solve for 
this parameter, x sub m. So I've got this equation, and I'm just going to solve for x sub m. First thing you note is this sine. We can cancel that out of each term. Then we've got x sub m here on the left, so we'll factor this um, minus m omega sub f squared plus k out. And on this side, we've just got p sub m. So it ends up looking like this, p sub m divided by this quantity, k minus m omega sub f squared. Now we can define a, um, a natural frequency. We call this the natural frequency. Like this, just the natural frequency of the system from before. We, we know that that k over m is something like this natural frequency squared. So then what I want to do is come back in here and divide by m on both sides here and rewrite it this way. So I'll just write on the top p sub m over k because I factored the k out here. And then on the bottom, I'll write it this way, 1 minus the forcing frequency divided by the natural frequency, that whole quantity is squared. Okay, so what can we say? Well, this here, x sub m, has to equal this in order for, for this expression to be a solution to this differential equation. So we've, we've kind of put a restriction that x sub m needs to equal this. And, we, and remember, we use this uh, natural, we define this natural frequency as, as part of that. So one thing to notice here is that in the, uh, um, this expression, that on the bottom of the fraction here, we have this, this quantity, 1 minus the um, forcing frequency divided by the natural frequency squared. And so if the forcing frequency is equal to the natural frequency, take a look at what happens there. We, we get 1 minus 1 is 0, and this blows up. So that's clearly a problem. And I'm gonna, we're going to take a look at that in this here. Now if we take a look at the, the factor here in the bottom, 1 minus the, the forcing frequency divided by the natural frequency squared. We, we can define this. This is called the magnification factor. So I'm going to write this MF. The magnification factor is equal to that forcing freak 1 minus the forcing frequency divided by the natural frequency squared. And we take a look at this and uh, we could graph this out as a function, the magnification factor, as a function of this ratio, the forcing frequency divided by the natural frequency. And it looks something like this. Let me bring this in here. looks something like this, where we have, okay, you can see here we've, we've got the, the ratio graphed on this axis, the forcing frequency divided by the natural frequency, and on this axis we've got the magnification factor. And so when, when the ratio equals 1, it's undefined. You can see here, right along here, it's undefined. So this is known as when the so when the forcing frequency equals the natural frequency, 
the, we, we say that the force is in resonance with the system. In resonance. So we call this resonance. So that's resonance. Um, the amplitude becomes infinite. Well, how can that really be? Well, of course, it, it doesn't really become infinite. In a real system, you have some type of damping, some type of friction. And we haven't put this in these equations yet. We'll do that next time.